Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about modular arithmetic. Now, the title or the name modular arithmetic sounds kind of scary and confusing, but the overall concept is quite simple. Actually working with it, it's also confusing as well and we're going to focus on that in this video. Now, first and foremost, let's just talk about modular arithmetic. Uh, modular arithmetic is basically using a concept that we are extremely familiar with, but focusing on a different aspect of it. So normally, for example, if I were looking at, let's just say nine divided by eight. Okay. Now when we have a problem like this, it's fairly simple. How many times can eight go into nine? One time. So we do that. Then we subtract eight and then we have one here. You can't do anything else. So we always have two approaches. We either change it to decimals or afterwards we just put remainder one. So normally we're focusing on how many times this number can go into this number. And then we have this one. That's our primary focus. Well, with modular arithmetic, our focus is not on that, but on the remainder itself. Right? We only care about the remainder, nothing else. So that's what modular arithmetic is. Now, the confusing aspect is one, the notation and some of the symbols. Notice that I have two of them right here. And this is what annoys me. I hate this the most is the fact that with the parentheses and without the parentheses, it means two different things. Well, first and foremost, let's just talk about this. This right here, that number symbol, right? I want you guys to notice the place of the number symbol, the pound symbol, hashtag, whatever you want to call it, right? This is the original number or the number that's being divided by. Number divided by, okay? The A right here is the remainder. Remainder. And mod B, luckily for mod B, it's the same thing as always just write mod and then B, whatever B is, that's the dividing number. So right here and right here, that's the dividing number. Dividing number. So that's where it gets confusing. If you are careless in any way like I am, right, and I often read the statement just by skimming it really quickly, missing the parentheses the statement is something completely different. The information given is all in the different place, right? So notice that once again, the number being divided by is on the outside or the other side, right? If there's a parentheses, but if there's not a parentheses, the remainder is on the other side. The number being divided by is actually right there. Okay. So there's that. Now, the other thing you got to notice is that it doesn't use equal signs. It used equivalent sign. It looks like an equal sign, but it has one more dash on it. The reason is because since we're focusing on remainders, right? There are many statements that can provide that same equivalent, I guess you could say answer, right? So for example, this right here, you have a remainder one, but guess what? If eight divides into 17, well, yeah, two, and then you have 16, you subtract one. Once again, it's remainder one. Right? The mod is still the same, but the no original number being divided by and the basically remainder is, well, the remainder is the same. The, the original number is different, right? So let's just write this in a statement that makes a little more sense. Let's just say, for example, I'm going to write it in the second statement just so we don't have parentheses. It doesn't get confusing. Remember, A is the remainder. We're going to say the remainder is one. That's equivalent to what? Well, it's equivalent to basically original number. You can say nine mod eight, right? Notice that eight is the number that is dividing. Nine is the number being divided by. And <clears throat> this is the same as 17 mod eight. And we can go on and on actually. That's the same as 25 mod eight. And we can keep on going. So these guys are all exactly the same, right? And even if you write it in this notation, right? If we write it in the notation with the parentheses, which now our original number, depending, it's going to be, uh, well, it could actually be one is equivalent to nine is equivalent to 17 is equivalent to 25. And that's equivalent all to the statement of one parentheses mod eight. So there you go. 
Hopefully, I didn't confuse you too much, but notice how easy it is to be confused by it because once again, we're working with equivalent statement and the entire writing of whether there's parentheses or not parentheses is drastically different as well. So, how can we be good at this? Honestly, practice. Getting used to paying attention if there's parentheses and if there's not parentheses and just sort of building a muscle memory so that when you read it, you immediately know what information is given based on the placement of that information. So let's look at some example problems. All right, so our first set of practice problem, here we have it. We have 13 mod three, 155 mod 19, and 144 mod seven. Now, once again, keep in mind that since there is not a parentheses, the numbers in front of the mod is the original number and after the mod is what you're dividing it by. So we're trying to find the remainder. Remember that we're not doing equal signs anymore, we're doing equivalent signs. That's usually the case when we're working with mod. So, there it is. Now, luckily for us, without the parentheses, it's fairly simple. We should be comfortable at this point in trying to figure things out. So, for example, 13 mod 3, basically you get 13 divided by 3 and you try to find the remainder of it. And in this case, well, what is that? 4, 12, 1, remainder 1, right? So, there it is. That's your answer for the first one. The second one, same thing, 155 divided by 19, and if you're not sure, you just check numbers. So for example, 19 times nine, what is that? One, eight right here, that's 171, that's too much. So 19 times eight, what is that? Two, seven right here, that's 152, that's pretty darn close. So if that's the case, it's gonna be eight, 152 minus right here, that's three, so it's gonna be remainder three. So the answer for this one is three. Same thing for the last one, right? 144 divided by seven. Remember what that number is after the mod, right? Seven goes in here twice. That's gonna be 14, subtract zero, carry to four. So what is that? That's gonna be uh, 20 remainder four. So the remainder is four itself. Boom, there it is. So. When we see a problem like this and there's no parentheses, of course we love it so much because we should be fairly good at division right now. And once again, remember, we're not worried about the actual number itself. We're just worried about what's left over, the remainders. And those are our answers. All right, so for this set of problems, you wanna list three numbers that are equivalent to the following statements. Basically, you have more, four mod 12 with the parentheses, two mod five with the parentheses, and six mod eight with the parentheses. So remember, this kind of notation is different from the first one, right? The first one without the parentheses, these were the original number that's being divided. This one with the parentheses, these are the remainder. So when it's asking about something like this, basically we're trying to find any number, three of them for each, right? Such that when you divide by 12, you have a remainder of four. So luckily for us, that is pretty simple, right? Well, if we have anything divided by 12 that has no remainder is basically divisible by 12. And so if we want it to not be divisible by 12, we want it to have a remainder of four, we just find multiplications of 12 and then add four to it. So even the most basic is just four, but let's just say, let's not choose four. The next one we're gonna choose is probably 16, right? Because guess what? 16, 12 goes in there one time, what you have left over is four. And then of course, afterwards you can say 28. And then you can keep on going. You can say what, 40, and so on and so forth. Now, the reason I chose these number was 16 is just because first I added these guys, and afterwards I just kept adding 12, just understanding that you know multiplication of 12, so on and so forth, with four still as the remainder. Now, it doesn't have to be this number. There's an infinite amount of number that you can choose as long as if you divide it by 12 and you have the remainder of four, right? This one, same concept. Well, the next number that I can think of that's fairly simple, of course, is seven, right? And then from there, you have 12, and then from there, you have 17. And each of these, when you divide it by five, you have a remainder of two. And then same with this one, the same concept. We have 14, then I have a 22, then I have a 30. And I can keep going on and on and on and on. It doesn't have to be sequential order in any way. It could be any number you want, once again, as long as the remainder is what is asked, and of course, the remainder is a result of whatever number you're dividing by. So there you have it with the parentheses. 
All right, so our next practice, of course, is now that we're sort of used to being able to solve for modular arithmetic with the parentheses and without the parentheses, the next thing is to be able to convert from one to the other, right? Just to actually further improve our understanding of the different notations. So first and foremost, let's just look at this. 13 mod three is equivalent to one, that's great. There's no parentheses, so this is our original number. If we were to convert it into ones with parentheses, basically, What's gonna be on the outside now is the original number, which is gonna be 13, right? And then now that's equivalent to basically one parentheses mod three, okay? So luckily for us, the mod and the number is always gonna stay the same or right next to each other, so we don't have to worry about that. It's just these two numbers are always gonna be flipped depending, right? So the next one right here, this one has a parentheses, right? So that means this must be the original number, so that's gonna be one fifth, the five mod 19, right, is equivalent to three. And lastly, of course, we have this one right here. There's no parentheses, so this is the original number. This is the remainder, so we're just gonna flip it around, right? So that's gonna be what? Now it's gonna be 144 is equivalent to four parentheses mod seven. Okay, so once again, look at, pay attention to these two numbers, most importantly in the parentheses and without the parentheses so that you know they are the one that's gonna be flipped, right? Whereas everything else is gonna stay the same, okay? So there you have it, parentheses and not. All right, so with this, we're at the end of the video. Now, this is the most rudimentary, the most basic of basic kindergarten version of modular arithmetic, right? There's so many things to cover in relation to modular arithmetic that makes it so much more confusing and so much more complicated, right? This is the positive version. There is a negative variation, which I'll probably focus on in another video. And there's a bunch of different properties on how to actually work with it to make it a little easier. Now, there's a lot of real world applications on this as well in terms of computer database and so on and so forth. Or if you can think about a very simple word problem of rather than how many groups you can form, right? Whether there's gonna be anything left over after you combine different groups and you wanted to form new groups of 15, so on and so forth. There's a lot of different applications for modular arithmetic. But, you know, it's confusing. Not a lot of people like it when they first are introduced to it, but hopefully this makes it a little easier, at least gets you more comfortable with just a notation of how it's written. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you in the next video.